I mean, I think rather than talking about dates and quite things, I think it's the way I see it is that there was this reframing of the debate around the humanitarian uh, approach um, as compared to a security centric focused on, on nuclear weapons, which, you know, tends to favor more the deterrence arguments and how many nuclear weapons do we need in a, in a country in order to preserve deterrence mm -hmm. uh, as a credible source of, of national defense. Um, and that's fundamentally quite disempowering for, for campaigners and also states who want to engage with it. It very much leads you to a situation where you've got certain states who have control of the debate and who have the agency to speak in the debate and the rest of the world who just have to you know, sh sit down, shut up and, and listen quietly and you know, shout a bit from the sidelines. So this kind of humanitarian uh, reframing um, empowered both uh, civil society and states to kind of take a leading role, uh, as they've done in other campaigns, like uh, cluster munitions and, and landmines, as I'm sure you've heard um, others reference uh, a lot. So I think that reframing was, was a huge kind of uh, decision uh, as well. Um, and also the, uh, the ability of the campaign uh, of ICANN, and, and I, when I say campaign, I don't just mean ICANN, I mean also the states that were involved in it, the academics, um, the ICRC, uh, this kind of broader group of people, uh, to find moments in time to kind of build and continue momentum. So those were the humanitarian uh, impact conferences mm -hmm. were the most prominent examples of that. You know, it was a big gathering of states, uh, got together, lots of new evidence was, uh, was uh, unveiled and, and we heard very uh, poignantly and, and prominently from the survivors, the Hibakusha and also the nuclear test uh, survivors. Uh, so having those moments in time created and built a sense uh, of momentum mm -hmm. as people started to realize, mm, actually there is another, another way forward. Um, the UN uh, as a forum was very useful for that uh, as well. We had uh, several um, meetings uh, at the General Assembly where states got together delivering increasingly strong joint statements uh, about the humanitarian consequences and then also about <coughs> the idea, uh, uh, the need for a new legal instrument to fill uh, the legal gap, uh, as it was called. So um, through that, you kind of we, re we reached a kind of breaking point in, in 2016 with the open-ended working group, which was a group that was set up to identify what are the different options uh, on the table to to remedy this uh, the situation, to break the status quo, uh, and and that uh, at that uh, uh, open-ended working group, it was quite clear that the the single the most you know effective the most uh, supported. Uh, idea was this idea of a, a treaty that would prohibit them. Um, and that, importantly as well, was the, was the idea that the treaty was something that could and should be pursued even if the nuclear weapon states uh, stayed away from the process. Um, I think, you know, then obviously we led into the negotiations the next year, which um, the momentum kind of carried us through uh, to that. But I would just, I just finish with just emphasizing um, the importance of the realization in civil society, in governments, in academia as well, that pursuing a legal instrument um, without the states that are the key, the main perpetrators of the harm that we're um, alleging, uh, not being part of it, that that's something we should still continue to do and that's something that's useful um, uh, in terms of building a norm that would affect both practice um, both practice and, and theory around uh, nuclear weapons. So we actually were um, we actually did have the, uh, the stream of the Nobel um, ceremony on, or the announcement, the press conference, um, because it had been a big, nuclear weapons had been in the news a lot that past year. Uh, and ICANN has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in the past, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we have been, we've had had journalists wandering around here on the day, you know, waiting, and we never really took it seriously. Uh, so we thought it was just gonna be another one of those years. But we knew that nuclear weapons had been in the news, so we kind of expected it to perhaps go to a nuclear weapons related, uh, you know, organization, maybe the CTBTO, uh, maybe the, uh, the drafters, the negotiators of the Iran deal. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we wanted to be prepared, you know, to give a statement on that. We had no idea, uh, obviously, that we were in the, you know, key consideration of it, as it were. So 10 minutes before 11 o'clock, um, we received the phone call. I picked up the phone, and uh, it's a really bad old phone as well, sticky buttons. And so I, you know, answered the phone, and, uh, you know, I heard a very strong Norwegian-accented uh, voice, which was Olaf Njolstad from the Norwegian uh, Nobel Peace Prize Committee. And, uh, you know, he announced, well, I, he said, I, I think I have some good news. I, I need to speak to, to Beatrice Finn. Uh, and then I handed the phone to Beatrice Finn. I still at that point didn't think that, you know, this was anything serious. I thought it was a journalist who was, uh -huh. you know, asking to, to get some reaction. Um, but then obviously, you know, I saw her face kind of like 
melt and like, you know, <laughs> freeze and be like, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, so then at that point, you know, it became clear. Um, yeah, well, I shouldn't say it became exactly clear because I still thought it could have been a hoax and something like that. So I said, nobody release any, you know, press statement. And then actually our website, you know, at 11 o'clock when the statement was actually made, our website crashed. So I couldn't actually, you know, publish the, the press release that we had kind of hastily put together. Um, we had to put it on Facebook first. Uh -huh. So that was the kind of madness. And then we had 10 minutes of kind of, you know, frantically, I think there's some video of this. Some, frantically walking around the office and uh, you know wondering oh my god what, what are we supposed to do okay we have to have a press conference we have to have a press conference that's what you know that's what organizations do when they, when they you know encounter these kind of things um, but then you know the, the phone just started ringing there was journalists outside the room you know they kind of forced their way in and took some pictures initially yeah which was I mean very exciting obviously so yeah it was it was a mad a mad day it didn't didn't stop until because that was a Friday it didn't stop until the Monday thereafter I'd say in terms of the work that we do um, and what we, you know, what we focus on and prioritize, it hasn't changed uh, so much. Our priorities are still the same. The projects that we're going to do, um, maybe we would, have, we would have done them anyway, but it just kind of elevates everything. It gives us much more, you know, many more opportunities to, um, to get meetings with people. Obviously, our, our you know, interaction with the media has been vastly improved um, by us. Everything has been just kind of elevated, but I mean, has it changed? the way we are as a campaign, I mean, no, I think the spirit of ICANN is the same as it was uh, before. Um, and I, I think, because ICANN is quite, you know, a big campaign, lots of partner organizations around the world, many of them work in quite difficult contexts like nuclear weapon states where they feel like they're just, you know, hammering away and not, not maybe achieving any kind of tangible results that they would hope for and feel kind of on the outside. Uh, or they work, in, you know, they're alone in a country where nuclear weapons are not on the agenda at all, uh, and they're wondering, you know, how much of an impact is this really making? You know, uh, is it is it even worth it to get try to get my government on board when they don't care about nuclear weapons at all? Um, and I think it's a huge validation for the work that those campaigners are doing in, in whatever context. And I think that's the most beautiful thing um, that I felt uh, immediately afterwards, and I get goosebumps just thinking about it right now. Is the celebrations from the, all over the campaign, the way they were, you know, whether, you know, from, you know, South Africa to, to, to Kenya, to Zambia, to, you know, Panama, just seeing our, our campaigners in all these different, you know, all across the world, get on TV, you know, take ownership of the, this amazing moment that had happened and really be elevated and, and validated for their hard work over the years. So I think that was the, that's been the most uh, special thing, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I. I I see our role here, I mean, we're quite a small staff uh, here in Geneva and uh, some colleagues, uh, some staff members outside of Geneva as well. But our role is mainly just to, you know, help and facilitate the work that our partners are doing because it's the work in capitals um, that makes a huge difference, especially now after the treaty has been, um, you know, as uh, open for signature and is on its way to, to entry into force. That work that perhaps used to take place in diplomatic hubs like the, the UN here in, in Geneva or in New York, it's even more important that it's taking place uh, in capitals now. That's, those are the opinion makers, um, decision makers that we have to, that we have to uh, convince. So the value of the network is entirely, I think, in, its, in, the, in the strength of the partner organizations. So the, the uh, ICANN Cities Appeal is a commitment um, that cities can make um, to endorse the, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons and call on their governments uh, to join. Um, it comes from the fact that, um, well, I mean, I think a general trend is what we've seen is that people are quite uh, all over the world, uh, not just in nuclear weapons issues, but you know, across the political spectrum are quite dissatisfied with national governments. Um, and there's kind of this frustration uh, with that. And it, it has taken some ugly turns in some contexts, but I think uh, one of the exciting things that's coming out of it is a much more um, uh, a resonance of local governments, of local activism and engaging with you know, uh, municipal governments as well and that the relevance that that can have. I mean, in the past, I think that's kind of been sidelined as something that's not s super exciting, local politics. Um, but I think it's changing now that, you know, this, this focus on uh, community organizing uh, and local government can have a resonance in terms of building a movement uh, nationally as well. 
and I think that's going to be true for, for nuclear weapons as well. Um, so, so cities, um, which are the, uh, actually the main targets uh, of nuclear weapons, uh, nuclear weapons are designed to be city, city destroyers, uh, to have the maximum impact, uh, to destroy as, you know, as many lives and, uh, and as much infrastructure as possible. So it makes sense also that cities have a responsibility, and city governments, mayors, uh, and city officials have a responsibility to their people to speak out uh, against this issue. That's, uh, you know, that's their job to look out for the well-being of their people. Um, so it makes sense when it comes to an issue like nuclear weapons that they would also uh, you know, use their voice uh, as the closest representatives of their people to speak out to the national government and say, you know, this is not being involved in this in any way, whether it be a country that actually possesses nuclear weapons or a country, and there are you know, a, several dozen of them, that endorse uh, the use of nuclear weapons um, through being part of so-called uh, nuclear umbrella alliances. Um, these city governments in those countries have a responsibility to say that's not acceptable. Not we're not in our name. Not in this city's name. Are you are you taking care of that? Are you doing that kind of uh, action? Uh, so I think it's it's something that um, both taps into a, a trend um, that's taking place right now, uh, and also just makes sense uh, just from uh, the nature of nuclear weapons. I mean, the, so there's there's a few different ways. I mean, the city's appeal, which we talked about, is is one of the one of the key ways. Um, Get involved with your with your local government. Find out who your local uh, you know representative for your district mm -hmm. is, and ask them if they've heard about the city's appeal. Uh, ask them if the city has a policy on nuclear weapons. What we're seeing is more and more cities pass motions or uh, solemn statements that kind of endorse uh, the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons and call on their government uh, to to join the treaty. And that's something that's you know that's something that local. City, city officials can do, mm -hmm. and that's something that individual people can do because these city officials, you know, they have to they have to relate to you in in some way. Um, so that's a that's a that's something that pretty much everyone can do because the city's appeal is not just for major cities; it's also for towns and and other municipalities. Um, on the national level, uh, there's also you know reaching out to your national parliamentarian. ICANN also has what's called the Parliamentary Pledge, mm -hmm. uh, which is signed by over 800 uh, parliamentarians across the world. And it's a pledge to, um, to work to, to bring the treaty into force uh, in that country. Um, so everyone has a, you know, a local, uh, a national representative. Everyone can write to their senator or deputado, wherever they are, and get them to, to endorse the, the parliamentary pledge. And the final thing as well is um, nuclear weapons are an extremely costly uh, enterprise. And this money doesn't just come from uh, governments. In fact, it comes mainly from uh, banks and financial institutions. Um, ICANN, uh, through our cooperation with our partner organization, PAX, uh, publishes the Don't Bank on the Bomb uh, report every year, um, which is a, you know, an amazing study that kind of reveals the lack of transparency around the way financial institutions and banks uh, funnel money into the major companies that produce uh, develop and are involved in the modernization of nuclear weapons and also developing ideas about new nuclear weapons you know as uh, as uh, the United States came out recently more usable uh, nuclear weapons which is a it's a horrifying prospect in and of itself um, so through this don't bank on the bomb report citizens can reach out to uh, their banks and ask them how they're involved and encourage their banks to be more transparent which which companies they're investing in and also uh, encourage them to remove their money uh, from institutions that develop uh, nuclear weapons. So I think those are three, um, three things that pretty much everyone, whether or not you're an experienced campaigner or not, uh, can get involved in. I think one thing that I've learned through being an ICANN is focusing on small victories, the small wins uh, along a way and seeing them as being along a path. One thing that's you know, very important about ICANN is our single-minded focus on the TPNW. Right, but the TPNW was—it wasn't just you know to get the treaty entered in force and that's it, you know, and then let the thing happen by itself. Uh, but to draw a line between all the individual victories, so each pledge, each parliamentary pledge that's signed, each city that gets onto the the appeal, each email that you get back from uh, you know a decision maker in government that responds to your question, where you get a new piece of information that you can share with the wider network. Each of those things to, comes together to form, you know, to build momentum. Um, and that's how we got the treaty into, into force, and that's how we're going to use the treaty uh, to change uh, actual policies. So focusing on the small wins is, is incredibly important. Uh, nuclear weapons is a, sometimes, I think the apathy around nuclear weapons comes from the fact that people see it as such a huge kind of issue that's something that's been around forever, something that's never going to change is what I hear constantly, not just from 
not just from governments, but unfortunately many of my friends sometimes <laughs> in these governments. Um, but, um, you know, politics changes constantly. We're in a political climate right now that would have been totally unthinkable um, many years ago. And that doesn't only have to be a negative thing. It doesn't have to be um, the, the ugly face that we've seen in, in many countries. It can also be positive changes. It can also be quick changes in issues that we thought were in, intransigent uh, for a long time. And nuclear weapons is, is part of that.